Hello and welcome to the Australian and New Zealand Environmental History Network Conference for 2020. I'm Dr Margaret Cook from the University of the Sunshine Coast. I'm speaking to you today from the lands of the Yagara people in Ipswich in Queensland and I acknowledge their elders past, present and emerging as well as those on the lands on where you are joining us from. I'd now like to welcome our speaker, Janine Kitson. Thank you, Janine. Thank you, Margaret. It's really very important for me and a great pleasure for me to talk about this topic. And I hope I'll be able to make sense of it, why Wirrumbirra matters. And Wirrumbirra is an Aboriginal word, a Tharawal word, that means sanctuary. And this is a 95 hectare bushland that was created as a flora and fauna sanctuary not far from Sydney. I'd like to pay my knowledge that I'm meeting on the land of the Darug people, but also pay my respect to the Tharawal people where the word Wirrumbirra comes from. And it is their word, Wirrumbirra, and it has been appropriated and used as the name of the sanctuary. This acknowledgement that I give to you is a illustration of the New South Wales Teachers Federation Welcome to Country. The reason why I show it is because it's deeply connected in its way to the founder of Wirrumbirra, a woman called Cecil Harris, who was a teacher and a member of the New South Wales Teachers Federation. For those who don't know where Wirrumbirra is, it's in Bargo. And I guess if you go to the top of the map, you'll see Sydney. And basically, you drive southwest towards Barrel and Mossman. And there in the centre of the map, you can see. Bargo. Uh, Bargo, this area is named after Bargo brush, which is a, a rare species and a threatened species of vegetation there. It is quite a long distance from the centre of Sydney, and yet the forces of uh, the people who formed it were very much from Sydney and travelled to Bargo um, to build and manage this property. There is a sign that says Wirrumbirra and underneath it you'll see it says it's a National Trust property. The National Trust is a conservation group, um, conservation organisation that is found in every state of Australia. But the New South Wales National Trust was formed in 1945 um, for the protection of the natural environment and it later became more the built environment. But Wirrumbirra is a property of the National Trust. But importantly, it was under the control of the David Stead Wildlife Research Foundation. So although it is owned by a National Trust, it was controlled by another entity called the David Stead Wildlife Research Foundation. And here is a sign that says that Wirrumbirra Sanctuary existed. And you can see that we, there was a frog day there. And this photograph was taken several years ago. This is what it looked like before the bushfires of 2019, late 2019, and where it was raised to the ground. So much of this now does not exist um, that I'm going to show you. It had gardens um, that were planted, acacia gardens. It had driveways. It had uh, information building because it was established to be a environmental education centre. And 
It then morphed into a recreation, passive recreation area for people to come and enjoy the nat nat this more area of bushland. This is a schoolhouse that was used as part of that environmental education. It no longer exists, it was burned to the ground, as was this because this is a dormitory. That was a, a bunk dormitory so that children could stay overnight and experience the natural world and environmental education. Wirrumbira also had one of the first Nate nurseries established here and which was very famous for propagating the white waratah. And it had paths and short bush walks, as well as formal gardens, such as this one named after the environmental educator, Alan Strong. But the genesis of this property began by this woman here, Thistle Harris, who was born in 1902 and died in 1990. And her biography by Joan Webb goes and uh, outlines her outstanding contribution as an environmental educator, as a botanist, and as an environmental campaigner. The issue with Thistle was that as a, she married David G. Stead. She was the partner of David Stead, who was an outstanding early Australian environmental pioneer. And when David died, she wanted to create a memorial to him. And that's why the land was purchased at Barco and created a memorial named after him, the David G. Stead Memorial Wildlife Research Foundation of Australia. And David Stead was one of Australia's most talented pioneer naturalists and conservationists, a self-educated marine biologist and naturalist who it is claimed by some was largely responsible for the ideals and philosophy behind our environment movement today. And that is the symbol of the David G. Stead Memorial Wildlife Research Foundation. But what happened was when this property was established for, for the, and the, the Stead Foundation was established, they then transferred the land to the National Trust to be kept in perpetuity on the understanding that the Stead Foundation would manage this property, which it did for over 50 years. And I'll just give you a quick little bit of a background of David Stead. I'm sure many of you know him. The plume hunting, he was very significant in stopping um, that in Australia. And he formed his wildlife preservation um, found. Uh, Wildlife Preservation Foundation in 1909, which was one of the first environmental campaign organization in Australia. And I don't need, think you need to read the quote. All you need to see is the danger of extinction that he is aware of in 1909. He was very pivotal in campaigning against the great koala slaughter in the 1920s. He was a public servant and did work on the rabbit plague. He was a marine conservationist and wrote many books on the marine world. But of course, he also helped people of his generation, such as Annie Wyatt, who was the founder of the National Trust. And through this friendship, that is why Wirrumbira and the National Trust were so ideally suited by in this all Harris's mind because of this the joint work that had happened between them. For some who don't know that David Stead's daughter was Christina Stead and she wrote the book The Man Who Loved Children, which is an autobiographic biographical book about David Stead, her father. And the novel casts David in a quite a negative light. And I 
believe, one of my ideas is that Wirumbira was to show a memorial about his incredible contribution to the environment movement. This is their house, um, David Stead's house in Watson's Bay, which is on the harbour of Sydney, and where Thistle Harris moved in when his second wife died. And they weren't married at that stage, and um, she lived there till um, the end of her life. And that property um, on her, in her bequest, was donated to the National Trust so that that money could be used for Wirumbira. But there was a legal dispute and that money did not go to Wirumbira. A little bit about Thistle. This is her book, Wildflowers of Australia, 1938, which was pivotal in popularising the Australian native plants. And, of course, she was a lecturer at Sydney Teachers College in Botany and was fundamental in driving environmental education. And that was her vision at Wirumbira with the bunks, with the education facility to take children outside and give them an experience outside so that they would appreciate and love nature. So this is a, just a little brief thing from the a statement of significant from the New South Wales State Heritage listing because the property is listed. Uh, Wirumbira is significant for its role in the development of the conservation movement in New South Wales. It's associated with the key persons who pioneered the conservation debate. And not only was it Thistle Harris, but her contemporaries of Vincent Cerventi, Alan Strong, and uh, Milo Dunphy. As a natural area, with rich and diverse flora and fauna, including rare and endangered species, and as a recreation social area, but, and as a historic site containing relics and cultural items, as well as being associated with the pioneer expedition to the Southern Highlands. I'll just skip that one, sorry. It also, in 2013, a motion went up on the um, New South Wales Upper House to congratulate the Stead Foundation for its 50th anniversary. And again, there were very powerful words acknowledging the contribution that Thistle Harris and David had, Stead had made to the study and the preservation of Australian plants and bushland and to the recognition of Australia's flora internationally. So it was really, um, uh, again, my apologies, you don't need to read that, it's just that it was a very significant place and it got acknowledgement for its contribution to that environmental history. But as I say, in 2019, the bushfires went through and it's burnt. The story that I finish with by saying is that the National Trust also decided to extinguish the long-term lease of the Stead Foundation. And when they did that, the name Wirumbira, which was owned by the Stead Foundation, also went. So Wirumbira as a property does not exist anymore. Oh, okay, thank you.